So Ben Shalom was caught on camera telling a journalist not to ask him questions about DeZone, Eddie Hearn, Pro Bellum, and Anthony Joshua. And following the release of this video, Ben Shalom did an interview here where he said, I didn't do anything wrong. Well, from a moral perspective, is telling journalists not to ask him questions about these subjects wrong? No, there's nothing morally wrong about it. But what you have to understand is that Eddie Hearn has set the bar in terms of approachability and transparency as far as boxing promoters. Eddie Hearn doesn't tell people, don't ask me this question, don't ask me that question off camera. He might say it on camera, but that's different, you see, because he's explaining why he doesn't want to answer certain questions about certain things. Maybe there are legal ramifications. Maybe he feels like he might mess up a deal. Or maybe he feels like when he gets questions about the direction of the zone and pay-per-view and all this kind of thing, that it's really above his pay grade talking about such things or giving answers to such questions. But Eddie Hearn allows it to all be on camera. And for you to at least ask the question first before he tells you, well, I can't really speak about that. You see, so that's what I mean by transparency and approachability. So he has set the bar because prior to Eddie Hearn, trust me, the Frank Warrens and the Frank Maloney's and all these kind of people were not very approachable. They're a bit more approachable now because they've had to evolve due to the fact that Eddie Hearn has been so successful. And part of the secret to Eddie Hearn's success is the fact that he's been far more approachable and more transparent than the likes of Warren, you know, Maloney before him and so on. So for Ben Shalom to come out and say what he said in terms of I did nothing wrong, he seems to be missing the point. He did nothing wrong morally, but boxing is a fan-driven sport and fans don't like when promoters are telling interviewers to edit certain things out, or don't ask me this question, don't ask me that question, asking for the ability to, ha to have a final review of the interview before it goes out, all this kind of... Boxing fans don't like all that. And of course, Eddie Hearn, very astutely, has jumped on that, the fact that other promoters ask for all these kind of things and they don't want to be, you know, posed certain questions and what have you. He's jumped on that and he said, hey, with me, you guys ask me anything. With me, nothing is off limits. What's up with these other promoters? Why are you not giving them the tough questions that you give me? You know, so Eddie Hearn's very clever in the way that he's playing that game. And Ben Shalom here has really fallen into a trap. If you're going to not answer questions about certain things, you should do it during the interview. You should say, okay, you can ask me that question, but I can't answer because of this, this, and this reason. That's what you should do from a PR perspective. Again, boxing is a fan-driven sport. So the perception the fans have of you is important. Yeah? So anyway, Ben Shalom said what he said. Don't ask me this, that, and the other. And he tried to spin it, right, in the response by saying that, it's the people that leaked the footage, the people who filmed him saying that and leaked the footage, they're the ones whose morals are questionable. But again, this is really not about morals. This is about what the fans like, given that it's a fan-driven sport. And you know what the fans like? They like the fact that this footage was leaked. The fans are looking at this thinking, well, this Ben Shalom guy, there's no point in watching his interviews because he's going to tell the interviewer, the journalist, you're not allowed to ask me this, this, and the other. Forget about him, I'll watch Eddie Hearn. This is what the fans are thinking. So from a PR perspective, this is not good for Ben Shalom. This is actually very bad for him. And maybe it was naivety on his part, I don't know. But yeah, in terms of doing things wrong, it's not about morals, it's about the fans. Because boxing is a fan-driven sport. So that's what I'll say about the incident there. And just as an aside, the first time I saw Ben Shalom, 
the first ever interview, the first time he appeared on camera, I was either in the Discord group, which I no longer have, or the Element group, one of the two. I'm on Element now. And I said in the boxing channel of my group at the time, this Ben Shalom guy has got some of the shiftiest eyes I've ever seen. <laughs> I mean, his eyes are just mad shifty. I don't know what, it, what the deal is with this guy, but he's got some shifty looking eyes. You can see it here and even here. It just always looks shifty to me. But anyway, let me know what you guys think about all the points I've raised in this video. How do you feel about Ben Shalom telling journalists not to ask him about certain subjects? Now, as far as Pro Bellum, I've seen some headlines here and there that there might be some back and forth legal letters between Pro Bellum and Ben Shalom. And again, I understand you not wanting to speak about uh, you know, a, a topic where there's perhaps a legal situation going on. I completely get that. But it's, like I say, better to do it on, I mean, this was on camera, but I'm saying it's better to do it during the interview. Say, okay, you've asked me that question, but I can't go there because there's a legal situation. That's what fans prefer. So anyway, let me know what you guys think.